If we could go ahead and move on to the next presentation, we would have, will have time at the end of this for some additional questions on any of the presentations, but I would like to go ahead and uh, turn the uh, group over to Arjun. Hi, everyone. Uh, he's going to be speaking to us on Simple BIO and on the school and community for communicating biology and biomedical science in plain language. All right. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, so uh, let me just move this over to the place. Is everyone able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Cool. Uh, thanks for uh, having me here. And uh, I'm going to generally talk about uh, a science project that we've been working on in our lab about generally thinking about communicating complex ideas using plain language. And this is a work done by a lot of people. And I'm just here talking head here just talking uh, for everyone. We are all from Michigan State University, uh, belonging to the computational mathematics science and engineering departments and also biochemistry and molecular biology. And our daytime work most of the time is really, you know, we study, we are computational biologists and we are involved in studying the genetic and molecular basis of complex diseases. And we are uh, people who develop computation methods that involve, you know, data science and algorithms that take advantage of massive amounts of data to build models and predictions. So, but in this world, uh, I've been working on this uh, in this area for about 16 years now. And then in this world, one of the things that I frequently encounter is this need because of uh, involvement in biology and medicine and having it's being uh, having implications in health and disease. I frequently talk to people about what algorithms may mean and what do these genetic tests and all that means. And in that context, I've had a lot of opportunity to really think about what, how can we actually communicate these complex ideas to people, especially non-experts. And by non-experts, I not just mean non-scientists, but also even scientists who are in adjacent areas. However, the way we communicate science today, it is super hard to understand, right? So because most of the way we communicate science is through papers, textbooks, or technical discourses that are quite hard to understand. And for example, there was a 2017 study which basically you know, looked at published scientific text from across several years. And they basically noted that the readability of scientific texts has steadily gone down with years. Uh, but science communication is extremely important as all of you know, and specifically technical language and jargon, however, is a big barrier to communication and it is specifically a barrier to understanding transparency, accessibility of the science, entry into science itself, and offer a diverse, uh, you know, uh, students and uh, general public, and also retrieving knowledge that is essential for one. So, what we wanted to do is to see if we can develop an online platform for science communication that serves two goals. The first goal is that we wanted to create an online tool that will enable scientists or students to write technical content in simple language or plain language, okay? And the second goal is to see if we can develop a community around this tool that involves students, teachers, scientists, writers, and even the general public, where they can sort of exchange science in simple language and through that process, engage in science communication and learning in some way. Okay, so these are the two goals. Uh, today, what I'm going to talk about is what is actually under the hood uh, of this particular tool, and then I'll talk a little bit about our tool itself, which is in very early stages. We are not even we are not uh, very close to you know releasing it to the public, but I want to sh just showcase our tool a little bit at the end. Uh, as you'll realize, one of the biggest problems here is that if we try to set out uh, developing a tool like this, we need to define what simple language is in the first place, right? But when we went around and sort of looked at some guidance, most of the times we, uh, the recommendations that we get are typically in the form of guidelines, rules, uh, tips, and checklists, which is very descriptive of what simple language should look like. So for example, there's plain language.gov, which was released as part of the Plain Writing Act of 2010 in the Obama's time. And it's a fantastic resource. And, and for example, NIH also has these checklists about how to write in simple language. But we were thinking, may, of course, a tool cannot do this without human intervention. So we thought, how do we quantify simple language in some way so that we can deliver it through a tool? Uh, one of the most uh, popular ways of quantifying uh, some simple language is through this measure called readability. Many of you might have encountered 
this flesh kinkaid grade level score or even the reading ease score which is essentially the following we given a piece of text it will calculate the average length of all the sentences and on the average length of all the words and combine them together and map them to us grade levels and it is very widely used in fact it's adopted as a standard in education government and finance and it's also part of many word processing tools like microsoft word and grammarly the take home essentially is that you know one should use short sentences and short words for to improve readability however we know this is not always you know enough for example this sentence here is super, is short but super hard to understand there are also many two syllable words that are quite complex and there are many polysyllabic words that are very easy to understand as well right so readability as ca characterized by this very old measure is not quite enough another common way of thinking about quantifying uh, understandability of words is through this frequency which means that words that are very frequently used are also words that are quite understandable so this principle is used for example in a subset of wikipedia called simple wikipedia where one is supposed to write articles only using you know either a list of 2000 words or 1500 words in a special list that is curated by people okay so which are very common words in english the same idea is for example used by randall munro he is very famous for creating this xkcd comic if you're not if you've not read it you should definitely read it he in fact wrote an entire book called thing explainer where he used the 1000 most common words in english to talk about various uh, things that are around us so it's very entertaining but it's but the idea is to use vocabulary but just using frequency is quite actually quite restrictive because for example i'm showing you if we restrict our vocabulary to top 1000 words in english we will of course get all the simple words but just this 1000 is totally arbitrary cut off which means that there are so many other words which are beyond this threshold but still quite you know understandable to all of us here these are some examples here so what we wanted to do is to see if we can actually do better which means that frequency using frequency is good but it's not enough word length is very misleading so we wanted to say okay can we create a new measure about how understandable a given word is and also develop a method that can automatically tell us words that are even field specific for example words in biology physics or chemistry that are generally more understandable than other words in that field and how sort of provide a gateway to understand you know science in those specific fields so this is what we set out to do and what we decided to do was to actually use wikipedia to sort of solve this problem i'm going to describe a lot of work done by this amazing undergraduate student matthew ortuso who is a physics major at msu and the reason we went to wikipedia is that wikipedia for example has more than 6 million articles in english but it's also frequently edited by people and the content is generated by people right so this is more like trying to observe what is out there and what the words people are using to describe things and use that to get a measure of understandability of words so for instance what we do is to go into wikipedia and mine all the articles in wikipedia which means that we are not only interested in the content of an article but also we go to the bottom of this article and figure out where how this article is actually characterized or rather categorized right so for example here the article on cell is categorized into cell biology cell anatomy 1665 in science all the way up to a category in science so we basically take all this all this um, mine all this data we are in our local repository we now have more than close to 4 million articles and more than 2.5 million words and divide it into a lot of different categories in wikipedia and using this what we do is to essentially say that the way in which words appear in articles across all these different categories are super helpful about are very indicative of their meaning and understandability so i'm going to skip this part a little bit i want to show you this example here so for example i'm showing you the distribution of how frequently two words the, first, the words are the and the second word is leukocyte appear across all the articles in all these categories as you can see the word d is more or less uniformly present in all articles all categories but the word leukocyte is present most frequently in health and this is our way of you know thinking about turns out this uniformity of words across categories is super helpful in terms of understandability so for instance the word d because it's very uniformly used it is more broadly understood and the word leukocyte because it's so specific as uh, specifically used it is less likely to be understandable 
So we try, uh, we quantified this. I'm not going to go into the mathematical details, but essentially what we are doing now is to combine how frequently a word appears and how uniformly a word appears and combine that together into a single measure. Okay. And we are calling that understandability. Okay. So now we have a uh, measure of understandability. The second is we can sort of take this idea even further to figure out understandable words, even in specific fields. So for instance, we can again go back to Wikipedia and say that there is general Wikipedia, there is science, and then within science, there are all these disciplines. So what we can you do use that to do is to say, we want to find out words that are very common, for example, in biology, but that are also not so very uniformly used across all of science. And that helps us in a very automated way, get to words very common in biology. So for instance, this approach gives us this automatic list of these top 50 words, for example, that are biology words. These were derived using an automated algorithm. We do not, there is no manual intervention that it gives us a nice list of biology words that one needs to know to even start a reading or understanding biological science. So of course we did this for a lot of different, uh, you know, areas, physics, for example, star galaxy, star six solar orbit, chemistry, uh, computer science, mathematics, and so on. We are able to do, again, do this for various disciplines because the algorithm itself is automated. Um, so ultimately what we have done is to develop a measure of understandability of words in, both in general English and in field specific, uh, in, and in a field specific way. And what we are able to do now is to go back to any piece of text, be it a scientific paper or a Wikipedia article, and in fact, directly track how much of a particular pa a paper or an article one can understand as we walk down these words based on their understandability. And so we're able to track readability and understandability like this for any piece of text. Uh, so going back to our goal, we wanted to do all this in the, as a form of a tool. So that's where SGCI came in and then we basically, you know, walked it back of the queue and we ca came to the front of several months ago and we were very lucky to start collaborating with Chun Han Yoon, who is an excellent developer with SGCI. And uh, Janel was a high school student with our group who started some development. So uh, with Chun Han, we have started developing this uh, tool called Simple Bio. It was originally focused on biology. We're gonna branch out into all, for all other disciplines of science. What it allows you to do is to either directly write a piece of text or paste a piece of text and it'll tell you which words are hard to understand based on the measures that we have developed. And then it is also an editor where well, you can start changing these things. And it has indicators of word complexity, both generally maybe in a field specific way, and also gives you indication of readability in a dynamic manner. And around this tool, we are doing a lot of things like, you know, uh, providing uh, Wikipedia previews of complicated words, uh, uh, phrases, side-by-side -side editor, tracking, providing a history of simplifications. And Chun Han has uh, also implemented user accounts, collections, and requesting simplifications and so forth. Um, just as a caveat, I want to say that really, you know, communicating in simple language is not that simple. That's not as simple as what I'm saying, because it doesn't just end with the idea of just fixing jargons. There's a lot about approach, why stone design and all that stuff is super important. And even more important is training, practice and commitment to it. So we are also piloting Simple Bio and the tool itself in classrooms across MSU in collaboration with instructors. And they and the instructors, one of the things they tell me often is that when students use this tool, their or understanding of the original content becomes even more, which is not surprising, but it's really cool that we actually see, see this. Okay. Uh, so I wanna stop here and say that science communication is incredibly important. And it is quite, uh, for example, scientists say that I just published some research that patients can't read. It's, I have not written a layperson summary, I have no plan of dissemination, but scientists also say that why do keep, uh, keep patients keep visiting alternative therapies? So we need to uh, do this, go through the extra mile and communicate science and our tool is to go one step in the direction. So these are all the people who did the work, especially Chun Han is doing the development. We had a, a tremendous amount of help from uh, Chrissy and Brandon uh, on developing, you know, the looks of the interface and the flow of this interface and all that stuff, especially usability. And I want to stop here by acknowledging my entire group and SGCI for the funding and the time with developers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh
Um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I, I would have one. Um, first off, really cool tool. Uh, I do. I, I was looking at the website. One thing I think could be cool is if it offered a thesaurus-like behavior that it could recommend. Is that in plans or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So there are two things that we want to do. One is we are implementing a feature called Wikipedia previews, where we will automatically find hard words or phrases. And if it has a corresponding Wikipedia article, Wikipedia gives us an API to quickly preview the first few sentences of the article so that you can use that to simplify. And then we are also provide, we are working on a thesaurus feature where for a given word, we can also we'll provide suggestions on other words that are more understandable that it can be replaced with. It's a great idea. I also have a question. Very nice talk. So Hi. is it only available for English language or are there different languages available or have you plans to extend it for different oh, languages? What, what an important question. So uh, I, I've thought about this a lot. So right now it is English, but uh, the way we have uh, basically created this you know, understandability index for both general language and for field specific, we have tried to, I tried to talk about the backend because it, we wanted to create an automated, automated approach that starts from Wikipedia corpus. So right now, for example, uh, what we can do is to completely switch out on language. And for example, take Spanish and do this entire thing and get indices or these measures for Spanish. So we can definitely do this. So that is the first aspect. As long as there is good representation of articles in Wikipedia, we can do this. The second is actually a slightly broader uh, aspect that I wanted to think about. Uh, we know that automated translation is a super important area in artificial intelligence and machine learning. So for example, in Google Translate, you can stick a text and it'll give you a translation. But of course, we know that very complex scientific text is very hard to translate by automated translators. But the moment it is simplified, the trans even automated translation becomes easier and more accurate. So I think hopefully what we also want to do is to use this tool to create simplifications of many scientific texts and use automated translation to translate it back to other languages as well. But it's a very important aspect. Thanks. Thank you. So there's an ultimate goal to do this for more than just biology as well? Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, we I, we call this simple bio because we come from bi biology. But uh, the moment we realized that we could just you know quickly just change one category setup and then uh, get these measures for physics, chemistry, computer science, like I showed you, we want to re completely rename this tool and retool this for any uh, you know discipline in bio in science. Yeah, 